Welcome back to the Printosaurus. Today we finally have the SV08 uh, all assembled, put together. We've had it for about four weeks. And today we're gonna go through uh, a couple of tweaks that I did, a couple of modifications that made this a significantly better printer. Uh, we're gonna talk about how loud this thing is. We're going to look at the inductive probe and we're gonna run through some PLA, PETG settings and tell you what I think. So stay tuned, we're gonna get right into it. With the Solvo SV08, it is a Voron 2.4 based machine, uh, injected molded parts, uh, comes almost completely assembled. Uh, you just have to put the Z axis together. The instructions work out pretty well. Uh, not too bad. Um, if you've done a Voron uh, 2.4, this will be extremely easy for you. If you haven't, uh, just pay attention to your instructions and you'll be okay. You'll make it through. So once you get everything set up, you will find when you turn this thing on, it is loud. So the first thing we're going to take care of today is exactly that. We're gonna make this thing uh, not so loud and we're gonna make it work a little more efficiently. So to make this thing not as loud, uh, what I recommend is a fan upgrade. Um, the Nashua 24 volt fan, I have a link down in my description for that. It's a 40 millimeter by 10 millimeter fan, same form factor as the stock fan, but it is much quieter. Um, if you just do that fan mod, uh, it's still gonna run at 100%. That's an issue with uh, the stock configuration is as soon as you turn the machine on, it runs at 100%. It does not turn off um, at any point in time. So it just runs full speed and makes a lot of noise. So the Nashua fan is quieter, um, big difference. And if you wanna take it a step further, uh, I'm going to drop down below and also walk you through on my computer here, um, how to change in your print configuration. You can add a fan setting that will make the fan run at a certain temperature and above. Uh, and then that will pretty much make this thing extremely bearable. Uh, you won't have any issues being in the same room with it when it's printing. Uh, it will run uh, once it gets up to temperature. Uh, and I've found great value in that um, because it's not annoying and it's not super loud, uh, which, you know, if you've got kids, you've got babies, whatever, sleeping, uh, you know, sometimes that stuff can get pretty loud if you don't have your printer in a basement or a garage or, or some other area that's away from your, uh, space that you use on a daily basis. So again, we're gonna jump over on the computer. I'm gonna run you through that, uh, where to make those configuration changes. All you have to do is copy and paste what I have down below. So to do your fan removal, you're gonna flip the SV08 on its back. Uh, so you're exposing the bottom of the printer. There's a large metal uh, stamped steel or aluminum uh, shield that basically shields all the electronics and wiring and all that stuff. Uh, six screws will remove that. And once you have that removed, you have your electronics um, accessible. When you are removing that shield, the fan is attached to it. So just kind of trace out that and you'll see where it plugs in. They have it uh, glued in place. Just gently pry that glue away and pull that fan off. Um, you can utilize the same two screws for the notchable fan. Um, it, again, it's the same form factor, so it drops right in place. Uh, very easy mod. Uh, if you don't wanna do the printer config, um, I suggest doing both because it's only going to enhance your experience further. Um, but uh, throw that fan back on there, connect it back in the same spot that the original fan was in, and you are back in business. So another big mod or tweak that we did, the inductive probe on the uh, Solval SV08 is not very accurate. It's not uh, of high quality. A uh, couple of issues there with getting, uh, you know, doing your quad gantry level and doing your Z offset and getting everything dialed in, bed mesh and everything. Um, inaccuracies for sure. And uh, I was doing a first layer test and uh, really just that offset wasn't wasn't dialed in and uh, it led to some separation issues with that first uh, layer. Um, I made a probe setting change uh, in the print configuration to uh, try and improve the inductive probe uh, that is on the SV08. And what I did was I increased the number of attempts, so that's going to give it more data. And then I switched from average uh, sample type to median 
uh, I was able to then uh, do my offset calibration and dial that in. I use a piece of paper and do a probe calibrate and really dial in that offset. And I found that it maintains that setting. Um, I haven't had very many variances um, from doing a layer test, turning the printer off, turning it back on, doing another test. Um, I was able to successfully maintain a good result. Whereas previously, you turn it off and turn it back on, when it went back to probe, when everything heated back up, it, it really changed. Um, I recommend doing a good heat soak with this thing too uh, before you do uh, your probe calibration. And what I mean by that is turn this thing on, turn the bed on, and let it sit at 60 degrees, 80 degrees Celsius even, and let it really soak so that aluminum plate um, just soaks in the heat and any... Uh, deformities or anything like that from the plate not being leveled, uh, you know, heat expands, contracts, things like that. Let it set, and then once it's set for maybe five minutes or so, uh, then do your uh, probe calibrate, and you should have a more accurate result um, there as well. So those are just tips and tweaks that I did to improve that uh, cheaper inductive probe that this thing uses. My Voron 2.4, I use a Voron tap, and that thing has been uh, fantastic. Uh, first layers are just on point. Uh, so in comparison, um, you know, that's an advantage that you have with going the Voron, is really you can build the thing out of the box any way you want. There's a lot of things out there, but what's cool too is the SV08 is based on that, which means there is plenty of room to tweak and change and upgrade and uh, utilize some of those Voron 2.4 parts as well. Because you have to remember the Solvo SV08 is at a $550 price point. There are going to be some setbacks or cheaper items on that because you know they have to in order to give that to you at that price point. Well, today's video is sponsored by PCBWay, PCBWay.com. You know, we've got this Solvo SV08 and maybe you want to add an enclosure. Uh, so there's a lot of good information out there on printables. There's a good one. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below. And that has print files and it has the schematics for doing the uh, acrylic panels that you would need to enclose the printer. So using a service like PCBWay.com, maybe you need to have those panels CNC'd, upload those on the website, uh, utilize them to take care of that stuff for you, especially if you don't have access to that CNC. And maybe you want to print your parts out of something a little stronger that you don't have access to. Nylon, ASA, ABS, you know, not all of us have well-vented environments. So having a service that offers those uh, quality um, filaments is a great opportunity to take advantage of them. So check out PCBWay.com. I'm going to give you my Orca settings for my PETG that uh, produced a good result. Be a good baseline for you there. Uh, everything else I did, I tested in PLA. Uh, PLA Plus by Voxel. Uh, it's good stuff. I have to tell you, it is. I've been pleasantly surprised at how good the PLA Plus by Voxel is. So definitely check them out. Um, I'll drop a link down below where you can get some of that. But uh, I use their gold filament uh, for some testing. And what I like to do is I do a first layer test with all my prints, get that dialed in. Once I've got that dialed in, I like to do a print in place. Um, and you know, then you really get your clearances and tolerances and everything kind of dialed in there. So I printed a pirate uh, like telescope um, that I'm going to show you here. And uh, you know, this thing turned out really nice once I got that uh, the first layer and the Z offset and everything all set up. A much better result uh, and clearance wise, tolerance wise. Uh, pretty accurate. So SV08 out of the box, pretty good. I've seen some recommendations to tighten the belts. Uh, it's probably worthwhile, just tweak it a little bit. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot um, there, but uh, you know, uh, I have seen a little bit of ringing. So that is something you could do that could improve your prints a little bit further is uh, go ahead and tighten your belts um, for your X, Y axis there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we're going to move into a couple other prints that I did. I printed a, a, a bridge um, out of some PLA silk. Um, and really with that, I wanted to see if I could get some overhangs there. Uh, and everything there turned out nice. The, the SV08 is a fast printer. 
Uh, when I did my PETG settings, I definitely dialed it back, but PLA, I kind of left at the, the stock settings that the Orca Slicer had for the SV08. So uh, I will share those PLA settings. I did make some changes to retraction, uh, flow setting change, um, and temperature. Temperature was something else I changed. So minor tweaks, but I will share those, and uh, those will be good baselines for you guys. SV08 by Solval, what do I think of it? Uh, overall, for $550, this is a very good printer. 350 by 350 by 345-ish uh, build volume, it's fantastic. Um, right in line with the Voron 2.4 in terms of build volume, uh, and you have the tunability. So you can really make this printer. I've had it a couple of weeks and I've already improved and enhanced some things to make this really a great printer. And all of those things I did with minimal uh, you know, amount of, of money to improve. I just uh, bought a $25 fan. Really, the rest of it I was able to print or modify in the printer config. So great value there. And honestly, like head to head, uh, you're going to see changes and you're going to see differences. Uh, there's no point in really comparing uh, a Solval SV08 to a 2.4. And that's because the 2.4 is so far advanced in the sense that you built it, right? So you had to build that thing from the ground up or you bought a kit that was pre-assembled. Uh, but, you know, they're utilizing uh, really good parts. Uh, cost really isn't um, a consideration I would feel like with a Voron 2.4 because you are getting a lot of great aftermarket additions between nozzles and hot ends, um, electronics, and uh, you know the 2020 extrusion costs a bit more I'm sure than than the manu manufactured stuff that Solval is using. But Solval doing a cheaper version of the Voron 2.4 is fantastic because a lot of people may not have the time or the knowledge yet to build a 2.4, but they may want to use one. And this is a great way to get introduced to that. It's a great way to start with it. Um, so I recommend it. You know, there's a couple of things I, I, as I mentioned, you need to do out of the box that will help your printing experience. But you know, that's part of the printing journey, right? Is to learn these things and, and get better at printing and enjoy it. And uh, this machine will offer just that. It's a great introduction to Clipper as a whole. I know there's a lot of other printers that are running Clipper, but uh, there's something about that Voron-like experience um, and that community as a whole is fantastic. Uh, so you'll be able to utilize them too for answers and, and different things as you go through this process. So. I do recommend it, especially for the money. So go out and get you one. As always, I appreciate everyone. Thank you so much. Please like, subscribe, comment. Love to hear from you. If you do have a Solval SV08 or you have a 2.4, let me know what you guys think of it. I'd love to hear from you. I wanna interact with you guys more. So drop some comments down below and uh, we will talk. So thanks everyone.